next guest cautions that the economy still faces some long-term headwinds. Jason Pride is director of investment strategy, Glenn Mead, which has $18 billion in assets under management. He joins us now with his perspective on the market. Jason, great to have you today. So in the break, Thanks we were meal. talking about long-term versus short-term risks, mm -hmm. but in the near term, it is looking really positive. So let's start there. What's going well for the economy right now? Obviously, the GDP report today. Right. Obviously, the GDP is you know strong. We've had two quarters sequentially now of positive GDP. Retail sales are strong. Employment is starting to look like it's heading in the right direction. So there's a lot of things domestically that are happening in the right way. And we know about the uh, the emerging markets. Those are also pretty strong. Europe's a little bit weak, but on the whole, that's a pretty positive scenario. So we think that momentum will probably continue for a little while, even with the long-term headwinds. And those long-term headwinds, we heard the former Federal Reserve Chairman Alan Greenspan tell this to our, our Al Hunt, and that is this mm -hmm. overwhelming concern about sovereign debt. And it's obviously coming to the forefront in Europe right now. Dom Chu from our markets desk just as this report here in the U.S. we could be facing similar problems down the road. So explain to us how you see it all unwinding. Sure. There have been a number of studies that have actually looked into debt levels at, uh, at sovereign entities and typically uh, it is that when you hit 90 to 100 percent debt to GDP ratios you tend to have a payback period. Basically when one to two percent or GDP hits a one to two percent slower growth rate during that uh, the next 10 years. Um, you know, our nation's only at about 70 to 80, depending on how you measure it. So it's a little bit further off. But nevertheless, we're in concerning territory, territory where perhaps if we're doing the right thing, we should be doing something about it now, which would actually act to slow down the economy a little bit anyway. Okay, so if you're investing right now or trying to make some decisions, how do you weave in these near-term positives with these longer-term concerns that we're talking about? What's so, the best strategy? So you don't just blindly look at the near-term phenomenon of the rebound and go, you know, full force into equities and equities only. What you do, you take a little bit more balanced approach and recognize that there's some long-term headwinds and risks that you have to deal with. But take value opportunities, yield opportunities, uh, get some exposure to emerging Asia in some form or another. Basically try to hedge yourself against some of those risks while still taking an equity stance so you can benefit from the near-term move. So when you talk about focusing on yield opportunities, you recommend using high-grade, high-yield bonds as well as utility stocks right. as a substitute for some income production. Wanted to ask you about Starbucks, which announced its first dividend, dividend excuse me, mm -hmm. this this uh, week of ten cents a share. I mean, is that really uh, <laughs> a strategy to to you know sink your teeth into? I don't think we're necessarily chasing after Starbucks, and, and ten cent dividend doesn't necessarily mean that this is suddenly a a reasonable yielding stock at this point in time. The the point is is to recognize the fact that your fixed income portion of your portfolio is really not delivering the yield that you want to. So you have to do some other things in order to deliver that yield, and this is going to be a yield star environment for some time. So to do so in ways that make sense, that are decent value opportunities, uh, we, think that, we think that works. You know, we're finding that in what we're kind of jokingly calling high quality junk, the highest grades of the, of the high yield sector, and utility stocks, which are yielding very uh, you know, good dividend yields compared to their bonds. Cash, simple question, stocks, bonds, cash, how does that allocation pie look to you? So stock bonds cash, we're sitting basically in a neutral sort of position. We're trying to underweight the cash because you can't get anything there and using some short-term securities that give you a little bit more on the fixed income side, but then spreading that risk basket out on the equity side to try to include a lot of other things so that we hedge that risk exposure just a little bit. All right, you like industrials. Uh, you say it's a play on a global infrastructure spending, typically late cycle businesses. Mm -hmm. uh, talking a lot about China. Does that concern you at all in terms of this uh, talk of, uh, of bubble risks and bubble bursting risks? I think at this point we're still looking at the long-term growth that's going on in emerging Asia on the whole. We think you need to have some reasonable exposure to that. It doesn't mean that it's going to be a smooth ride. I think we've all been through these rapid growth periods for a number of nations. They tend not to follow a straight line, so you have to recognize that. But it pretty much is one of the only growth stories out there. Stories out there. You're not really getting long-term decent growth out of the U.S. or Europe right now. So to, to spread over and go into some form of emerging markets exposure indirectly through multinational industrials makes some sense to us. What about a stronger dollar? Is that factoring in and all this shifting we're seeing in currencies? You know, the, the dollar is definitely going to be strong for a little while here because Europe on the whole has a more problematic debt situation than, than the U.S. 
they're dealing with it first, so their currency is going to be weak first. Uh, longer term, I think the dollar eventually is going to have similar problems, just not yet. So that hasn't factored into your investment choices in terms of these multinationals and emerging markets that you're investing in? It actually has to some degree. We've been showing some preference for European multinationals because this Greece situation is actually giving you the opportunity to purchase European multinationals cheaper than U.S. ones. You're getting basically the same economic exposures, the same exposure to emerging Asia, but you're getting it at a cheaper level, which we think is warranted right now. And you also like technology, and you brought some stock picks in this industry. Intel, Microsoft, and Oracle are running out of time, so if you could give me kind of a blanket sure. statement as to what you see uh, supportive of these yeah. names. Blanket statement is we're, we're basically investing for the global corporate profit growth rebound, and that flows over directly into technology spending. All three of these are beneficiaries. They all have expanding margins, and some of them are consolidating the industry. All right, we'll leave it there. Jason Pride is the Thank director you, of investment strategy at Glenmead. Real pleasure to have you on today. Thank you.